One of the points I make about workplace bullying is that it actually has nothing to do with the work. It does and it doesn't. Bear with me and allow me to explain. The ultimate goal of all workplace bullying is to eliminate the target. And when workplace bullies are actively trying to get rid of you, engaged in all the pathological lying and the narcissistic smear campaign, when they smear you to the higher ups, the people who matter, they have to make it sound as though it's just about your work. Either your work is not good or you don't work well and they attack your work ethic and habits. That's because they cannot be honest with anyone, including themselves, about what workplace bullying is really all about, which is their pathological jealousy that is happening on a soul level. With most of the narcissistic smear campaign, otherwise known as gossip, this is where workplace bullies really expose themselves because almost none of it has anything at all to do with work. Instead, it's all about your physical body. Workplace bullies are obsessed with every single aspect of your physical body, including apparently if you are a woman, your uterus and your vagina. What do you look like? What does your hair look like? What are you eating? What are you wearing? Who are you screwing? Or more importantly, who's screwing you? Are you getting married? Do you have a boyfriend or girlfriend? Do you have kids? It's all about what you have, your apartment, your car, your computer your clothes, your hair, your shoes, your scarf, your jewelry, your bag. It is simple harassment. What are you putting on the surface of your body and what are you putting inside your body? And none of it sounds very work related to me. Workplace bullies are obsessed with your physical body because they're obsessed with physicality in general, because that's their level. They're like little babies crawling around on this base primitive 3D, low level, trapped in the matrix, experiencing life exclusively through the immediate five senses without any imagination, creativity, or even abstract thought. When workplace bullies want to attack you, it is always a three-step process. First, they start with your physical appearance. Then, when that doesn't work, they go after your personal habits. That includes your work ethic. Finally, when all else fails, they attack your character. It is so predictable, I could time my watch by it. And most of that has nothing to do with work either. When it comes to workplace bullying, it is never about your work. It is not that your work or your work ethic is not good. Quite the opposite, if you know what I mean. So what does workplace bullying have to do with work? Not a whole heck of a lot. When workplace bullying is about work, it is never that your work or your work ethic is not good. It is the complete opposite. Another point I make about workplace bullying is that it is different from childhood bullying. On the schoolyard playground or in the middle school lunchroom, the target of bullying is most often the child who is simply different. The one with red hair, the one who is heavy, the one who is a person of color, etc. It has been said that in the workplace, the target of bullying is the star. It is not that your work or your work ethic is not good. It's that it is, and workplace bullies live wholly in a world of comparisons. Workplace bullies don't appreciate the comparison because they don't appreciate being shown up. Some workplace bullies may be very good at what they do, very accomplished, and have achieved very high levels of prestige, status, and power. They may be in leadership positions in the workplace and may even be your superiors. It doesn't matter. They're jealous anyway. Workplace bullies are not okay just being okay. They have to be number one in the warped, sick, twisted, dark, and ugly mind of a narcissistic workplace bully. If you're not first, you're last. When workplace bullying is not about the work, then what is it about? What is going on here? What is the deal? Why do workplace bullies bully? There are a number of reasons that workplace bullies do what they do, ranging from primitive to complicated. It could be that they perceive that you have more than they do and they want what you have. Jealousy is a lack of gratitude. Workplace bullies are too stupid to look at their own blessings. If you have something that they don't, they don't see what they do have. All they see is that they don't have what you have. It could be as primitive as the way that you look. Yes, workplace bullying really is that petty. It could just be that you don't want to be friends with them. And who can blame you? 
If you're like me, you tend not to want to be friends with people who are actively in the process of bullying you. It could also be that you don't want to have sex with them. Again, who can blame you? It's understandable because their energy is absolutely vile. It has nothing to do with their physical body. It's just their energy. More often, it is that you get more attention than workplace bullies. And attention is workplace bullies' narcissistic supply. Narcissists cannot live without supply any more than you can go without air to breathe. And for a lot of narcissists, supply is attention. They are the proverbial tree falling in the forest. They don't know that they exist without attention from other people. They are like juvenile, infantile, immature, narcissistically entitled, three-year-old spoiled brats who disrespectfully assume that their parents are so stupid that they cannot divide attention equally among multiple children. Workplace bullies do not share and they don't play well with others. The rest of us learned in kindergarten how to share and wait our turn. It's like right now little Johnny is getting attention, after that little Bobby can get attention, and after that another child can get attention. In the warped, sick, twisted, dark, and ugly mind of a narcissistic workplace bully, if another person is getting attention, all that means is that he isn't. It could be that you get attention from their love interest. Again, pettiness. And the conventional wisdom is that you remind the workplace bully of someone who hurt him. As always, it is simply fun to be mean to someone who is nice. Most often, the reason workplace bullies bully has nothing to do with work and everything to do with their narcissism. One of my theories about workplace bullying is that it is a form of narcissistic abuse. So all workplace bullies are narcissists or at the very least have narcissistic tendencies. I'm serious, I'm gonna keep saying it until I see it in the DSM. Workplace bullying is one big proverbial temper tantrum that workplace bullies throw when they don't get their narcissistic supply. Workplace bullying is the devaluation phase of narcissistic abuse. It is an attempt to punish you for the narcissistic injury that you inflicted when you did not validate the narcissistic ego and feed the narcissistic supply. Again, narcissists cannot go without supply any more than you can go without air to breathe. The target of workplace bullying is targeted because that person poses a threat to the narcissistic ego. Workplace bullies feel threatened. You can literally feel their fear. What are workplace bullies so afraid of? They are afraid someone will rip off the mask. Maybe you already saw the mask slip. Another one of my theories about workplace bullying is that most often the target of workplace bullying is an empath or at the very least a highly sensitive person. And as empaths, we see right through them. That power alone is a threat to the narcissistic ego. It could be that you inadvertently pointed out some flaw or error in their work or work ethic. It could be that you dared to stand up to them or worse, were just about to. It could be that you are aware of how long they spent in the bathroom or that they had a cold sore or a pimple. Again, pettiness, whatever it is. If you are a non-narcissist and a non-bully and a decent, sane, normal human being and you are aware that somebody spent a long time in the bathroom or had a cold sore or a pimple, you don't say anything, you don't point anything out, you don't let on. It doesn't matter. If you are an empath, they know you know. They are afraid of what you know and what you see even if you don't do or say anything. In other words, they're insecure. But the biggest reason that narcissistic workplace bullies bully is their pathological jealousy that is happening on a soul level. Another one of my theories about workplace bullying is that it is spiritual warfare happening on an energetic level and it's all about levels here. It is amazing what some of these people have. Jobs, money, houses, families, kids, even beauty. And they're still jealous. What are they so jealous of? That's simple. They are jealous of your spiritual qualities. It has been said that most often what people are really jealous of are not so much tangible things like your money or what you look like, but rather the intangible qualities of a person's character, such as confidence, enthusiasm, and joy. It has also been said that the target of workplace bullying may have more integrity than the bullies. 
The narcissistic injury that you inflict is that you are not getting into all the drama and the gossip and the nonsense. That alone is insulting and offensive to narcissistic workplace bullies who absolutely live for that stuff. Workplace bullying is do-gooder derogation. You have the moral authority. Your spirit is not as dark and ugly as theirs. You are simply on a higher spiritual level. Workplace bullying is narcissistic spiritual abuse, straight up, simple as. And I'm not talking about the kind of spiritual abuse where people use religious texts to dominate and control others. I'm talking about real spiritual abuse, which is the abuse of the spiritually strong by the spiritually bankrupt. You like easy answers and simple solutions? This is it. You are bullied because you are a better person than they are. That's all there is to it. There are no laws against workplace bullying, and here is why I do not have hope that there ever will be. How can anyone ever legislate or regulate pathological jealousy on a soul level? How do you know workplace bullies are jealous of your spiritual level? The same way you know about workplace bullying, they let you know with their constant unrelenting one-upmanship with their constant comparisons and all of their petty, passive-aggressive insults and put-downs. Workplace bullies really, 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 really need you to feel bad about yourself. And I'm not going to lie to you. All of the smearing and the slandering and the pathological lying hurt. It's outrageous. It's maddening. You're negative, angry, and unhappy, you're in a bad mood, you're bringing everybody else down, you just don't want to be here, you're not on task, doing something not work-related, you're difficult to talk to and unfriendly, you're not a team player, you don't play well with others, just don't get along well with the others, and you're not collaborative, blah, blah, blah. But the whole point of workplace bullying is to scapegoat you, which is to sacrifice and crucify you for their sins. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The function of all abuse is to create in the victim the external reflection of the abuser's own internal reality. Workplace bullies absolutely hate themselves and they target you so they can project onto you everything that they hate inside of themselves and then kill off those aspects of themselves that they hate. So learn to take every single word out of workplace bullies' mouths and turn it around as a reflection of how they really feel about themselves. Workplace bullies bully you because you have more spiritual power than they do. So use it. So that's a summary of a point I want to make about workplace bullying, which is that it has nothing to do with work. I hope that helps. Take care.